Hello everyone. I hope your Tuesday is uh, going well. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. It's just gorgeous out there. No warming up and uh, like I said I, I think spring really is is here. We hope to stay this time. Uh, not sure. I think they're calling a little cooler on the weekend but still not too bad. Uh, so it's, it's uh, one of my favorite times of year for sure. Uh, I like it this time of year when it starts to warm up. I like in the fall when it starts to cool down. Uh, those are my probably my two two favorite times. But anyway, well, I want to jump in here and uh, start on this, uh, you know, talk about this devotional a little bit, uh, the Infinitium uh, Lenten journey that we've been on the the uh, U Version Bible app, Bible.com, and it comes from this offshoot of the uh, uh, Salvation Army. Uh, some good stuff here. We're going back to the. Uh, inspect uh, if you remember that that little thing we talked about uh, last week and uh, how you take you break down a passage of scripture and so we're going to do that again with uh, uh, this this passage in John uh, 12 uh, verses 1 to uh, 11 and uh, look at sort of it, I'll, I'll go over it with you again it, so you just remember uh, it's inspect and the eye represents insight just some kind of insight to be gained, that kind of thing. Uh, second is some kind of a nugget from, from the passage that uh, sort of jumps out at you. And then uh, uh, sin to avoid. Uh, what, what, are you, you know, what do you need to avoid that the passage is telling you? Uh, promise, which is, uh, you know, what, what, is, what are you promised in this? Uh, then example for you to follow. Uh, command for you to follow. And then uh, truth to know. And so uh, I'm not sure you really find all of these things in there. There's not a lot of promises in this passage, but we'll, we'll talk about it as we go, go through it. Of course, we want to look at it through the lens of, of surrendering ourselves to the Lord in this Lenten, uh, Lenten series. Uh, let, let me read it for you. The, the heading on it is Jesus anointed at Bethany. It says, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Uh, Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As a keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. I was, it was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. Uh, now it's important to know the next next verse is Jesus going into uh, going into Jerusalem on uh, Palm Sunday, and so that that tells us a little bit of the timing. I think that has to do with why Jesus says it was intended that she should give should, should save this perfume for the day of my burial. Uh, there's a lot going on here. We talked quite a bit about that yesterday. Uh, you know, some of the idea of, of of sort of why why did this happen the way that it did? Why why would Jesus say it's okay to use this perfume here? Why wasn't the money? Why wasn't the perfume sold and given to the poor? And we talked a lot about time. There's a time for this, and there's a time for that. There's a time for for everything. And and I kind of want to hit on that a little bit today, because I I really think that is the the heart. Of, of this passage, especially when we're talking about surrendering. Uh, I think we surrender to the Lord's leading in, in whatever way, uh, you know, he, he wants us to surrender. That's the way we, we surrender. And, and I think one of the things, I was thinking about the insight really that I, I want to talk about today, and, and it's related to that, and, and that's the sense that a worshiping heart leads to a giving heart. Um, I, I think that that's what we see in, in Mary, uh, and I think that's what Jesus is pointing to, to those around him because he wants them to understand there's a time for worship, there's a time for giving, uh, there's, a, there's a time for sort of you know, selling perfume to make money to give to the poor. But, but so that's what Judas Iscariot was thinking, oh, it's time to sell it for you know, the money, but he 
of course, had improper reasons for that. He wanted to sell it for himself to get some of the money himself. But, but anyway, I, I go to, to what Jesus said in verse 7. Where he says, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. So, so that to me is the nugget. That, that, especially that last that sentence, verse 8, it says, you will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. So to me, that's kind of the nugget that I want to focus on today. Uh, you know, Jesus saying what, what he's doing there is, is a direct quote from the book of Deuteronomy. And I, I want to read a little bit of that uh, for you in, in chapter 15. Uh, Deuteronomy, starting with first verse, uh, I'll start with 7. Uh, read a little bit of this for you. Uh, because there's, it, it's important for us to put this together, I, I think. Uh, it says, If anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites in any of the towns of the land of the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted towards them. Rather, be open-handed and freely lend them whatever they need. Be careful not to harbor the, this wicked thought. The seventh year, the year for canceling debts, is near, so you do not show ill will toward the needy among you, among your fellow Israelites, and give them nothing. Uh, point being, they had a, a deal where, you know, the seventh year, there was a seventh year where all debt was forgiven. And so uh, it, it's kind of referring to that. If Let's say it's six years and a half and you see somebody in need, you, you don't say, well, they'll, they'll get out from under it in six months or three months or however long. Uh, Jesus, or the Lord's saying, God's saying, go ahead and help them. Don't have a hard heart when it comes to, to giving. Don't, don't uh, you know, keep, keep it. Do it, give, just be generous. That's what he says next is give generously to them and do so without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord, your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you, you put your hand to. There will always be poor people in the land. That's the quote that Jesus is, is using here in this passage. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open handed towards your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. Uh, so this is part of the law. This is part of, uh, of the way, you know, God, this is Moses telling the, the Israelites to, to, uh, to be open-handed, to be giving, to, be, to give generously uh, from a heart, not begrudgingly, but from a, a heart that is open and ready to give. And so, so we, 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 we come back to this passage, and, and I sort of, again, in, in relationship to what I talked about yesterday, I, I think Jesus is, is saying here, okay, you're always going to have the poor among you. There's a time to help them. Don't forget that. Always be generous and open uh, for, for, uh, towards them, uh, no matter what, even if it's close to being forgiven or whatever. Always be generous towards, towards the poor. But he also says, but you will not always have me. And so it's almost as though he's saying in this situation, focus on me and then also be a giving. I, I think there's something there. Uh, you know, I think that inside, again, there's sort of this worshiping. You, there's a time to worship, but then out of that worship and out of a heart that's open to what God has and, and hearing from him and all those things, it should lead to helping, helping the poor. Uh, it should be helping, helping others. You know, we, we love God with all that we are, with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We, we do that first, and then we love our neighbors ourselves. Those are, that's the whole law put together, uh, Jesus said. So, so we, 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 we worship God first, but then we help other people as well. So, so they flow out of each other. So there's a, an, an, an idea here. I think we see Mary worshiping. It was a time to worship. And so, you know, and then out of that flows uh, you can give later. Well, you know, there's a time to worship and a, and a time to, to, to give. And so, so I think that, that maybe, it is, you know, we have our, our insider nugget, sin to avoid. I think if in the context of this, I would, I would say it's sort of uh, focusing on the wrong thing, uh, like Judas did. He's like, well, let's give it to the poor now. But Jesus says, wait a minute, this is a sign of, this is an act of worship and of extravagant love. Let's do that first. And then you're always going to have the, the needy among you, the poor among you. Do that later. Uh, worship first, uh, give, give later. And so, so there's your, your sin to avoid. Now, promise, I, I think there's a, uh, you know, kind of an unspoken here of a blessing that's, that's put on Mary for, for how 
what she's doing here for the Lord. I, I don't know. I that's one that I I wasn't real sure, uh, you know, how what, what I would call a, a promise, but but I think that's probably it. Uh, there's a, a, a blessing that comes on her for her, this act of, of extravagant worship, which, which that, I think, is the example to follow. Uh, be, be, you know, extravagantly worship the Lord, and then out of that, have a heart that's generous to give to others. Uh, let, you know, worship first, but then because of God's goodness and his blessings and, and all that, then we pass that on to others. Uh, kind of talked about that a little bit. I mean, I think that's the, the idea of, of discipleship, of, of disciples making disciples, right? We start with with worship and, and, and being connected to the Lord. We're, we're connected to the vine. And then out of that comes comes sharing that and, and comes fruit and, and all this, this other stuff. And so our, uh, that's, our, that's our example to, to follow. Uh, command. I, I was just thinking about how it's related to this Old Testament command uh, to to be open and to to give generously and to have an open heart. I think that's part of this, uh, you know, extravagant giving that comes out of extravagant worship. Uh, and so we see that in Deuteronomy. That's the Old Testament law, and and so we 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 follow that. That's a command for us uh, to follow. Truths to know. I, I think we go back to the idea that thought came to mind anyway. That, you know, there, there is a time for everything, and we talk about surrendering and surrendering ourselves. It, there's a time to surrender ourselves in worship. There's a time to surrender ourselves in in giving, uh, and in other ways too. We always need to be really surrendered to to the Lord and to His will for us, His desire for. Uh, for us, and so that's that's ultimately the point of of this whole series leading up to to Easter, this time of uh, of, of preparation for for Easter, this Lenten season is is about surrender. So we we're surrendering ourselves to to what God has for us, and recognize there's a time for worship, there's a time uh, for for uh, giving as well. Well, let's uh, wrap up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for how it, it speaks to us and how it uh, helps us, uh, even as we look at it and go deeper with it. Lord, you, um, you supply our hearts with all that we need to, to follow you, to put our trust in you. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would uh, help, us to, help us to do that uh, today and every day. We want to be people that are surrendered to you and your will. Uh, Lord, just be with each one today. Encourage those who need encouraging. Touch those that need touching with, uh, you know, going through physical issues maybe or emotional issues or, or whatever might be happening. Lord, we just ask for your blessings on on each one. We just pray that you would be near to uh, to those that are homebound and uh, just anyone that needs encouragement today. Lord, just surround them with your presence, with your love. Lord, you are faithful. You are good to do that. And so, so, Lord, we just lift them to you. Uh, continue to be in the situation in Ukraine. And, Lord, would again, we just ask that you would hold back the hand of evil there and uh, protect our brothers and sisters on the ground. Uh, be very near to them, Lord. And, Lord, we just pray for peace, not only there, but all around our world. Uh, that's what we need. Thank you, Lord. We just give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for uh, watching today, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow with uh, another devotional. But uh, you have a great rest of your day. Try to get outside and enjoy the beautiful weather a little bit if you can. But uh, we'll talk to you later. Uh, bye bye.